silence or stand. It was two minutes past two this afternoon when Dyson Hayden arrived to deliver his long-awaited judgment. The ACTU legal team didn't even turn up. Before I begin, uh, I should inquire whether anyone knows whether any legal representative of the ACTU and related parties is intending to be present this afternoon. Very well. It mattered little. Their attempt to remove the Commissioner had failed. I've considered all the submissions. In my opinion, the applications must be dismissed. I publish my reasons. His reasons, in true Dyson Hayden style, are lengthy, 67 pages explaining why he should remain. He says his speech at the Garfield Barwick dinner would have been non-political, and by agreeing to give it, there's no basis to conclude that he is biased against the Labor Party or the unions. He says no fair-minded observer could apprehend that he was intending to raise funds or generate support for the Liberal Party, and that there's no connection between the event and the matters the Royal Commission is examining. The unions, he said, had simply asserted he might be viewed as biased, but failed to prove it. Naturally enough, they disagreed. We're of the view that this Royal Commission is biased. It is a waste of taxpayers' money. And again, the ACTU and the trade union movement are renewing our calls for Tony Abbott to stop wasting taxpayers' dollars and shut it down. Much of this saga has turned on the emails Dyson Hayden received and read, and the fact that he claimed to have overlooked the link between the Liberal Party and the Garfield Barwick lecture, a link made clear on the invitation to the event, an attachment he says he didn't open. In today's ruling, the Commissioner admits that emails are not his specialty. In fact, he says he's incapable of sending or receiving them and only reads what is handed to him by his assistant. His supporters in government aren't phased. The reputation of this great Australian has been the subject of a campaign by elements both of the Labor Party and of the union movement. But Mr Hayden's reputation as a man of honour and as of a black little lawyer without parallel in contemporary of Australia has withstood the unions and the Labor Party's attempts to smear him. Already the judgment is being questioned from an ethical point of view by those who wonder if Dyson Hayden's fair-minded lay observer is a little too reasonable. Well, I think it would have been a very thoughtfully argued uh, decision that uh, Dyson Hayden made, but with great respect, I think he probably made a mistake by failing to distinguish the particular character of a Royal Commission as opposed to a court and imposing a standard of reasonableness in terms of the interpretation of people's intentions that really goes beyond what the ordinary man in the street might draw upon. I would ask you, Commissioner, to make... What now then for a Royal Commissioner who survived a near-death experience? His hearings resume tomorrow, but will the questions of bias persist? the unions and Labor will ensure they do. Despite the decision today of Dyson Hayden, the reality is that this Royal Commission is now terminally tarnished and any recommendation out of this can't be taken seriously in respect of looking at it for the political nature of this Commission. There's no doubt that this scandal has damaged the Royal Commission beyond repair. It's clear that Australians no longer have confidence in this Royal Commission to operate free from political bias. By 5 PM on Friday, Future Friday, witnesses might also be studying the Commissioner's precedent. He, he made it very clear that what had happened was that he had overlooked certain uh, material facts in terms of the invitation. And he's now, in a sense, created an excuse for everybody who comes before him who has similarly overlooked things. And I think that's probably going to plague the Commissioner and this Royal Commission 
for the rest of the hearings, and that's most unfortunate given the importance of the issues to be addressed. Tony Abbott will do anything to attack his critics. There's one more legal avenue that the union movement is still considering. That is to seek a judicial review of today's decision in the federal or high court. Instead of the commissioner deciding his own fate, it would be in the hands of a judge. I don't think his reasons can be appeal proof and that's because when the court looks at this case they'll start looking at it afresh. They'll just look at what the fair-minded lay observer would make of this whole situation. So they won't start with his reasons, they'll start with the situation as a whole. And so the distraction would continue and a royal commission that's already referred 26 union officials to the authorities for alleged corruption would limp on surrounded by questions. Unfortunately, that will further politicise the Royal Commission, uh, further complicate the position of the Royal Commissioner and potentially delay its work as well.